And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. And that is what we're waiting for. The hope of, of Christ. The hope of his return. Psalm 39. Deliver me, verse 8, from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Make me not to be ashamed before the unbelievers. Make me not to be confounded before the unbelievers as I live. Because he just determined that he, he, is, he is a show at best. He's, he's putting on his flesh righteousness. His flesh is doing what his mind wants to. And sometimes we all agree. There, there were some of us in this room that used to drink. And then the new man said, no, nope, that is no good. And now we are walking in a show. We are showing what the new man wants. The reality is, though, is that the, that flesh, 90% of the time, still desires those old cravings, still lusts after those old things. So we are in a show, right? We are best we can walking before God, letting his word minister to us, serving with the mind the law of the, of the Lord, that, that liberating law. But we are always under that law of sin and death that's constantly attached to our flesh. So deliver me from my transgression. Make me not to approach to the foolish. Because the reality is, is that any one of us can be exposed as hypocrites at any time. Because all of us are sinners. All of us are still constantly falling short of God's glory and getting tripped up and tangled up in the ways of our sinless flesh. And that's a problem that we're always going to have. And that's why our hope is in God. Because that's the only time that I'll finally be able to walk according to his will. Verse 9 says, I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst it. So I think David here at this time, he was before the wicked. He, he, he took heed to his ways. He kept his tongue. He kept his mouth. He was before the wicked. He was, he was keeping all of these things that he wanted to say in his heart, musing on the things of God. Comes to the Lord in prayer, realizes he's got nothing to offer God. He, he's, he's barely changed as to what the old man that he was. And yet he says, my hope is in thee. And he begs God to be delivered from those transgressions that are bogging him down. He says, make me not approach to a reproach to the foolish. Don't expose me, God, as I deserve. Give me mercy. Give me grace. He says, I was dumb. I opened not my mouth. Because thou did. And I think that's just a statement. Because thou didst it. God did what David asked for here and didn't make him a reproach. Now we see that David is revealed as, as a sinner. His, his sin with Bathsheba, the murder that he committed. But how often do the foolish open up the Bible and hear about that to David? You know, who do they hear about David and Bathsheba, the sins that he gave? We read them, right? We read through the Bible and we know this story, we know the truth of them. But if you ask the average unbeliever who David is, you know what they think? He's the guy that slew Goliath, right? He's the psalmist. That, that's generally what they'll, oh, he was the Lord is my shepherd guy, right? So, he kept his mouth because thou didst it. And we see like through the echoes of time, God kept his promise. The world at large doesn't know David in the intimate sense that we do. His, his great sins and, and his errors later in his life. But they know him as, as the conqueror of Goliath. They know him as the songwriter of Israel. And that's a wonderful promise that God made. And he has that same thing for us. When we ask not to be made a reproach, we're not ashamed before the unbelievers. He says he had no need to defend himself. And why did he have no need to defend himself? Because the mercy of God came upon him. David, just in this psalm, shows that he kept himself quiet before the world. He wasn't a man that always ran his mouth. He was a man that sought the Lord. When he finally got a chance to speak and took the opportunity to speak, he sought the Lord first and foremost. He realized that he was vanity. And even the good things that he does, it's only because God gave him the word that told him what he should do and gave him the, gave him the grace to empower him to do those things. He ultimately recognized that his hope was only in God. I mean, when, when we're nothing, when we're vain, when we're, when we're just, a, just an act before God, before the world, we see very quickly that our only hope is in him. 